You're never more than a few minutes from a weather update here on Super Talk 1270. Welcome to Community Talk, a public affairs presentation of the MSA United Way and Super Talk 1270. Now your host, Jenna Gullo. Welcome to United Way's Community Talk. I'm your host, Jenna Gullo, the MSA United Way Executive Director, and co-hosting with me, Ms. Amber Jensen, Operations Manager at United Way. Hello, Amber. Good morning, everyone. It is a chilly, chilly summer day. Feels like fall. I am not a fan. I'm just not ready, but no. what are you going to do? Kind of makes you work harder, doesn't it? Puts yeah, a little... cook the soup, I guess, already on the <laughs> stove. Put the heat seat on in <laughs> yeah. your car, I think. Uh, we have an exciting show for you today. We always bring together experts, community experts on lots of different issues. And with school kicking off in Mandan yesterday. Is that right? Yesterday that we started? That is right. Um, that we, we have a lot of changes going on in our community. We have Bismarck starting in just one week from today. And so we thought it'd be a great opportunity to discuss what's on the horizon for the upcoming school year in both Bismarck and Mandan public schools. So we've had a steady growth within Mandan enrollment, and we know that it's increasing from 2011 to 2013. We had 218 new students. In Bismarck, we had 689 over that same period, and we're anticipating other sizable increases for the upcoming school year. So today, we'll be hearing about enrollment numbers, discuss some of the issues that some of our schools have seen, how they've handled this dramatic growth, and what actions are being taken to ensure that our children are prepared for success. So later, we'll be discussing this with Superintendent Tamara Uselman, who's from the Bismarck Public Schools. But right now, I'd like to welcome some very very special guests uh, from the Amanda and Public Schools. We have the superintendent, Dr. Mike Bitts, and we also have the assistant superintendent, Jeff Lind. Hi, guys. Thanks, Jenna. Glad to be here. It's so good to have you here. You're such great supporters. Dr. Bits, I have to tell you, I didn't know Jeff was going to be here today. <laughs> Jeff's everywhere. Anywhere, <laughs> anything you need from Mr. Lynn, he's there. He raises his hand. But I have to say, with people like Jeff on your team, people like Laura Just, your social worker, I mean, you have developed an extremely strong team over the course of just a couple years. So thank you for doing that. And how did you go about doing that as a new leader in Mandan Public Schools? Um, it's always important to surround yourself with good people. And you're right. We really do have a great team in Mandan. And uh, it's fun to work with people who are uh, not only competent and do their jobs well, but are just good people. Isn't that so true? And Jeff, thank you for joining our board at United Way recently. Uh, you've added so much in the short time that you've been a member. So I really appreciate how you always raise your hand. <laughs> you probably don't know what you're raising it for all the time. <laughs> ignorance is bliss. Yeah, ignorance is bliss. But thank you for everything that you've contributed to our United Way and just over the last year especially. So thank you for well, everything that you do. Thank you for the opportunity to be involved. It's been a great experience to this point. Yeah. So Mike, talk to us a little bit about uh, your your past and how long you've been the superintendent and just tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. I uh, just finished my second year as superintendent in Mandan. Uh, before that, I was assistant superintendent in Mandan for two years. And prior to that, I uh, was in Hillsborough with superintendent for 11 years. No kidding. And so what changes have you seen the last two years? You know, the the just the four years I've been in Mandan, just the changes that have happened in the Bismarck Mandan community have been incredible. Just the number of students that we're seeing. Um, when I came in 2010, uh, we were just starting to see an uptick in growth, and um, that has continued and exceeded, I guess, what we were expecting. Um we started school yesterday, and uh, we're up again about 3.5%. We're up about 115 students. Wow. Um, it, it's exciting, um, but it, it does present some challenges. You know, We have to plan for that and uh, make sure that we have classrooms and teachers uh, ready for our students. Absolutely. So now when you became the superintendent, how do you even start to be proactive and handle, manage this growth that you know you think might be coming? You know, in order to make good decisions, you have to uh, have good data and good information. Um, we hired a demographer um, out, out of Kansas City, um, the same demographer that Bismarck hired, um, to give us some projections on what our enrollment was going to be at the elementary, middle, and high school level. Um, that data has 
proved to be remarkably accurate. Um, and with that data and with good data, we're able to make good decisions. Uh, we built a new elementary school, which we opened yesterday, Red Trail Elementary. Um, How exciting. It was exciting. It was fun to be up there. Uh, we had an open house last week. It was it was fun to see the students in that neighborhood come walking in with their backpacks and their parents. And uh, it is. It just, it just has transformed that whole neighborhood. It, it is exciting. And so that's up near the Seven Seas in Mandan? Yeah, um, just northwest of the Seven Seas, probably about two miles northwest. Wow. And so how many students will be attending the new school? Um, we had 294 on the first day yesterday. 294. No kidding. And so how does that compare with your other elementary schools? Is it on par with number of students or are you expecting, anticipating more growth? You know, the nice thing about opening Red Trail is our, our schools last year, our elementary schools were bursting at the seams. Um, we were able to take students out of Roosevelt, take students out of Lewis and Clark Elementary, um, Custer Elementary, and re relocate them in uh, Red Trail Elementary. By doing that, it took the pressure off of those schools. Right now, Red Trail is our third largest elementary school. Wow. Wow, that's neat. And so were you able to transfer some of those teachers, or are they all new teachers? We did. We set up a process. We wanted to make sure that our staff at Red Trail, as our other elementary and middle and high school, was a mix of uh, veteran teachers, new teachers. So yes, we did transfer teachers. Mm -hmm. And how exciting for them to be in a new facility, new space. And those kids just must be so excited and eager to learn. Was it difficult in the hiring process? I know every business in town throughout the state is just having a difficult time finding good people. And I know out west, they're having a teacher shortage. Are we seeing that here? You know, uh, we don't have as many people in the, pool, in the hiring pool anymore, um, especially at the high school level. You know, we used to sometimes get 10, 15 applicants for math or science. Um, now we might get two or three, three or four. Um, I think we're getting good people yet, but the pool isn't as deep. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. I have a lot of friends who are teachers and they say it's still extremely competitive in the Bismarck Mandan area. And if they're not willing to relocate, then they're waiting for openings. Yeah, I, I believe that to be the case. Yeah, for teachers to retire. So we will be back in just a few short minutes to hear more from Dr. Mike Bitts and Assistant Superintendent Jeff Lynn. Hear more about the growth, the challenges, and how we as a community can do a better job at helping our students succeed. Uh, this is United Way's Community Talk. I'm Jenna Gullo. Make sure that you log on to our Facebook page, like us, get some updates updated information and post any questions you want us to talk about today that's facebook backslash msau way or go on volunteerbizman.com to see emerging emerging needs in our community so stay tuned we will be right back at united ways community talk and super talk 1270 in studio, uh, but we will continue our discussion for now with the Mandan Public Schools Superintendent Mike Bitts, Dr. Mike Bitts. Doctor, thank you for joining us today. And we also have Jeff Lynn, the Assistant Superintendent. Jeffrey. Thank, thanks, Jenna. Uh, Jeff, you're a board member at our United Way. I just have to say thank you again for all the time and energy that you put into our community through United Way and giving back. Uh, Talk to me about how some of this growth affects children in the school and what challenges you're seeing with some of your students. Well, Dr. Bitts touched on the, the impacts of growth at the elementary schools level and us opening up uh, Red Trail Elementary to ease some of those class size issues. Um, part of my portfolio is working with the secondary schools, the middle and the high school. And so one of the challenges for us is preparing as those class, larger class sizes start moving into the middle school, into the high school, how do we address those space needs and how do we address the, the staffing and curriculum needs that we have there. So what are some of the things that you're doing to be able to be proactive in that? Well, uh, one of the things, um, in addition to the demographer study that Dr. Bitts touched on, is we do have a, a contract with an uh, organization to do a facility study for us. And so uh, JLG Architects is uh, currently in the district, and we're hoping to get a report back from them um, probably midwinter on uh, taking a look at our not only our physical space, issues, but also conditions of our buildings, uh, improvements, uh, whether we need uh, new facilities, expanded facilities, retrofitting some facilities or remodeling, um, just upgrading to, to meet the needs of, of our students uh, from uh, more of a 
global perspective throughout the district. Absolutely. And so this is maybe an ignorant question, but are the funds there to be able to provide for all of this growth? And how's that all work? Well, I, I, I think that the first step in that is trying to get an understanding of what we need uh, when we when we know what our space needs, when we know what our, our facility needs are. Uh, we can then get some estimates of what those costs are. And at that point, then we can maybe have better discussions about how we might go about uh, funding those those needs. Yeah, absolutely. Because we are seeing a greater strain on our teachers, I imagine, and on the facilities and on your budgets, I presume. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I think, though, um, you know, the state of North Dakota has done a lot of work in the last few years with the funding formula and and uh, making sure that we've been able to uh, increase teacher salaries. And, and uh, I think we're feeling in a pretty good place right now um, where we're at with being able to provide quality education for kids. Um, it's always a, it's always a, uh, a uh, fine balancing act to uh, make sure our resources are going in the right places. Though. Absolutely. And so how are you working with your teachers themselves and your uh, professional development with those teachers because it's it's a different community out there mm -hmm. and you both are such visionary leaders and develop such a strong team and so when you bring these teachers back to the new school year you know what are some of the changes that you've made well i think you hit it on the head the uh you know, the things that people see about our schools when they drive by on the street is the buildings and the facilities. And, of course, they get a lot, a lot of attention. But, but the vast majority of our fiscal resources go to people, which are, are what we are all about in schools. We're, we're, the school is really the people that make up that school, the teachers, the paraprofessionals, the cooks, the bus drivers, um, the administrators. And so we really have to put a lot of effort into building those folks up and building those resources just as much as we do into building our facilities as well. So um, from a professional development standpoint, one thing we did this fall that we were very excited about is we've kind of focused on the new three R's and there's a lot of talk about rigor and relevance in education today. Um, we made our focus of our professional development this fall on the third R, which is relationships. And really feel in some of the, the modern discussions about education, that's a piece that um, hasn't been talked about enough. And so we brought in um, a, a highly sought after speaker, Dave Weber, and um, had a in service not only for our teaching staff, but we had our cooks, our bus drivers, our paraprofessionals, no uh, everybody hearing the same message about how important it is to establish those strong relationships with kids, with parents, with colleagues, with each other, and really want to make that an emphasis for the year. That is so important because we were talking earlier, when you think of your favorite teachers or your role models, it was really the people that showed that they really cared Absolutely. about you and your growth. Uh, and and that, that they had a stake <clears throat> in the game, that they really wanted you to be successful for you and to be able to pursue your dreams and your hopes. I learned actually at a development training over the course of the last year and a half um, that the board approved, thank you very much, and was paid for by the Bremer Foundation, uh, that relationship development is the key behind any business that you're in. Uh, the relationships we have with our partners or with our coworkers, our board members, that that is what is going to get the job done. You know, you certainly have to have the data and the business acumen, but it's all about that um, way to connect with mm -hmm. people. It, it's really fascinating and so important and oftentimes overlooked in everything that we do. I, I know Dr. Bitz has mentioned this a couple different times, but the, the teachers you remember in your life probably aren't the ones that you remember for their highly effective delivery of instruction. It, 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 yeah, is, it is those plan. teachers that, related, that you could relate with and you establish those strong personal connections with. So what are some things that parents can do to position their children for greater success or to help you out, you know, in the, the managing and running of the Mandan Public Schools? You know, par parental involvement is, is, is huge. And sometimes there's maybe a, a, not everybody understands or sees parental involvement from the same perspective, whether parental involvement is coming into your child's school and being actively involved in that process, or whether it's being involved at home, helping them with their homework, maybe making sure or, or asking them what they have to do, um, keeping track of, of their progress and how they're doing in school. 
But really, um, I think uh, really uh, utmost importance is the communication piece between the the students, teacher, and that parent. I, I just think if everybody's on the same page, that is probably the most important parental involvement piece that we have and promote. Yeah, absolutely. And so for that parent to just reach out directly to that teacher and just have that open line of communication. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what about children who are struggling in school? What resources do they have available or do parents have available to them? Um, we have several different resources. It depends how they're struggling, whether it's an academic struggle or if it's a uh, um, um, a struggle with meeting their physical needs or, or their, uh, you know, not even enough to eat at home or not having school supplies. We have different avenues where we can help meet those needs. Um, if it's something where they don't have food at home, we have uh, social workers, we have counselors um, that will get involved and try to uh, make sure that the family is taken care of and that we connect them with resources, some of them through the United Way, where we can we can help them meet their needs. Um, if it's an academic struggle, again, we certainly want the parents to communicate with us, um, to work, get the parent and the teacher working on the same page um, and to meet those needs. And Jenna, just to follow up on that, one of the things I think we would really like to point out is, is the Neighbors Network involvement that we are now have access to in the Mandan School District. And I think United Way is a, has been a a strong driving force between us being able to access those resources. It's been a program in the Bismarck schools for quite some time. And so we're really appreciative of the opportunity to provide those family outreach resources um, to our patrons as well. Well, and we're hoping that as it gets really uh, revved up this upcoming school year, that it will be an additional resource for students and families uh, that extend well beyond the school day. So Neighbors Network is a group of case managers funded by United Way and uh, Bismarck Public Schools to be able to go into the homes of families who have at, children who are at risk. So it could be that children are maybe have they low attendance, um, maybe they're demonstrating behavioral issues in the school. Uh, and so the families are able to meet with caseworker in their home and to be able to link them with existing resources that can't all be done by the schools. And I imagine you probably feel that strain and stress every day throughout the school year. And so what do you see as some of the biggest needs for your high poverty students in the community? Well, uh, you touched on it. There's a lot of needs uh, that students have that aren't necessarily related to uh, academic achievement. And so, um, yes, we're seeing an increased uh, population of homeless students uh, within the Mandan school districts, as I'm sure Bismarck is too. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, the basics, food, shelter, clothing, uh, those types of things are so important um, for students to have those needs met before they come into the classroom because it's very hard for a teacher to provide effective instruction when the students' basic needs aren't met. And, and we, we are seeing, even though it seems like there is maybe more prosperity and, and higher wages w within the area, there's still a, a level of poverty that uh, is out there that we know uh, we need to address with kids. And, and so we're appreciative of those agencies that can help families meet those basic needs. It helps us do a better job academically, instructionally, when students are coming to school uh, and have access to adequate food, shelter, and clothing. Yeah, absolutely. And we really just want to thank you, Jeff, and Dr. Bitts for your leadership over in Mandan, uh, for your collaboration, your partnership. Dr. Bitts, real quick, any, any final words that you want to talk about? Any goals that you have for this upcoming school year? Um, I think we're looking forward to getting our new uh, demo demographic information and our facility study back just so that we can uh, continue to plan well for the future. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being proactive to all the growth, all the changes, focusing on relationship development with your professional staff. And thank you for your support of United Way in our community, all that you both do for so many students and families. If you have any questions, any comments, go to our United Way Facebook page at Facebook backslash MSAU Way. I am Jenna Gullo, your host for MSA United Way's Community Talk. We will be back in just a couple minutes minutes to talk with Bismarck Superintendent Tam Roselman. Right now it's 61 degrees. Sean Hannity, weekdays at 2, only on Super Talk 1270. 
Welcome back to United Way's Community Talk. I'm your host and MSA United Way Executive Director, Jenna Gullo, and co-hosting with me this morning, Ms. Amber Jensen from the United Way. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, And a special and quick hello to my lovely parents in Western New York. They were visiting here for three weeks. I'm trying to get them to move to Bismarck. Let's do it. Come up with that plan. Come on, let's start a a letter writing campaign to get them to get here. It's funny, though. They do love it. They love Bismarck, um, although it's a little chilly this morning. (laughs) That is true, but they're used to the cold, so That's they really true. can't use that as Western an excuse. New York, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, I'm also trying to get my nieces and nephews out here. Um, we People don't realize around the country uh, how much growth we've been experiencing, what an exciting community, and, and, and what great leadership we have here. We just heard from Dr. Mike Bitts uh, and Jeff Lynn, the super in- assistant superintendent uh, over in Mandan Public Schools, and now we have the pleasure of talking with the Bismarck Public School Superintendent, Tamra Uzelman. Tamra. Good morning. The Mandan boys are going to be a tough act to follow. Yeah, they're, they're pretty smart, aren't they? <laughs> they are. They know what they're doing. You know, it's so interesting, and I mentioned this to them off air. It seems as though there is just so much greater collaboration and communication across the river. I mean, between Bismarck and Mandan, I'm sure there's always been great relationships, but it seems as though when you came into your position and Dr. Bitts became superintendent in Mandan. You guys have really uh, found out ways to work smarter together and really lean on each other. I I love that. I I love that too. I think uh, Dr. Bitts is just the kind of personality that is so easy to work with uh, and still work really hard. And then adding Jeff Lynn to their team was an absolute um, genius move. So they're great to team with. It's it uh, Yeah, it's good for all the kids all the way around. Yeah, it really is, especially you probably have a lot of kids that go from Mandan to Bismarck or vice versa. Well, we share the Career Academy for sure. So um, that and the MREC, we have uh, uh, kids shared between us. That's nice. So for our listeners, um, what exactly is the Career Academy? Oh, the Career Academy is um, the uh, Vocational Career Technical High School Coursework Uh, that Bismarck Public Schools offers, and we have kids enroll into that particular program from out of district. And then the MREC offers some career and tech ed classes too, and schools that don't have all of those programs will kind of co-op and join in so that kids still get a really good career and technical uh, education course. Which is phenomenal because you're really preparing them for their careers, which, gosh, every business in town is just struggling. Mm -hmm to find good applicants and people with the skills. And your focus has really been on, on making them career ready. And, and it's not just those technical skills. I like how I was reading in your annual report, it's about having these kids be critical thinkers. I'm, I'm all for kids being career ready, but we aren't just creating workers for the world. We definitely want kids to be in positions of choice and having that personal empowerment. And to do that, they have to be highly skilled. So this huge academic content, but applied through critical thinking, I think innovativeness and creativeness. They have to be able to collaborate with other people. And to collaborate well, you have to be well-skilled when you go to the table to do your collaboration. And then finally, our kids have to be able to communicate. So uh, it is the 21st century kind of look at things that we're going after pretty with pretty serious intent. And so where do you even begin with that that model of thinking and preparing your teachers to, so, to incorporate all of that in addition to their <laughs> lesson plans or incorporating it within their lesson plans? We began this morning on that very project. It was our first day back with staff. We were at the Community Bowl. And so we had, you know, a thousand teachers and probably 800 support staff come down to the bowl. Uh, and what we did is really explain to them where we are in this process. So we set the vision and we went out and asked the community, what does a graduate from the class of 2027 need to know and be able to do? That's this year's kindergartners. Uh, you, you actually did a survey on that, we did. didn't you? We, we had 570 people respond from the community and we picked out the themes and they are themes that revolve around being able to communicate, having high academic content, um, being able to collaborate and work well with others who may be like them, but who may be from a very different mm-hmm. culture than they're from. Absolutely. Uh, creativeness or innovativeness or entrep- entrepreneurial spirit, however you would describe that, that was a very big deal for folks. 
uh, and then constantly communication. So that's what the community said that, and they like kids to be able to count, change, and know how to mow a lawn. Those were <laughs> those were <laughs> some on the more technical side. I'm surprised writing, you, gram- with, you know, with grammatically correct uh, right uh, language, and right. oh my gosh, that just kills me all the Short, time. Well, social media shorthands it. That's yep. for sure. So yeah, yeah. So so how do you communicate that vision? And have your professional staff implement that. That's a big task. (laughs) So I was asked to communicate my vision, and I thought people knew that, but I found out they didn't. And then I thought, well, who cares, because it's not just my school. I wanted Mm -hmm. to know what the school board members said. So they told us what they wanted for their own kids, and then the executive team members, all the principals. And right now, at this very moment, they are in the schools asking staff, what do you believe the kids who leave our building, whether it's Lincoln Elementary or Bismarck High School or... Horizon Middle School, what do you believe those kids should have to know and be able to do to meet meet the vision? Then we're going to get our vision hammered out. Ex- I mean, just real skill sets about what we want kids, um, what should they be doing if they're meeting the vision? And we are going on, on learning rounds to take a look at what's happening. And then at that point, we'd be ready to talk professional development. Too often with teachers, you throw professional development at them without ever asking their opinion and having them weigh in. So um, we're slowing it down and I think doing it the right way. And we began that today. God bless you. You're really amazing, Tamara. Everything that you figure out a way to fit into your schedule. It's, it's really astounding to me. I admire you so much. So what advice do you have for other professionals out there to be able to handle all of this? Because I, I can grasp what that, the time and energy that, going about it this way takes, but yet the results are going to be so much more powerful when you're empowering your your every level of your staff. Well, if you want to go fast, you go alone, but if you want to go far, you mm-hmm. go together. And so uh, I've been lucky enough to work with an executive team that's just second to none. And when you have, when you're with your teachers and your support staff and you listen to your parents when they want input, there's more wisdom in the room than one person has and that is how it works because there's so many people who are so much smarter than I am. <laughs> and if I'm smart oh, enough to listen and then we collect humble. we collect their vision, then it's our job to make it happen. So you have seen tremendous growth since you started as the superintendent. In fact, it I have data here that it says between 2011 and 2013, you had an increase of over 689 students. We have had an increase, and we're up a couple hundred again for next wow. year. Um, those kids, the thing about student numbers is they move. And so the, that growth in 600-some kids might actually be a difference of 900 kids because 300 came and went, and that really impacts the classroom pretty greatly. The mobility mm-hmm. is the biggest factor for kids. But we have been growing. Lincoln Elementary is full. Liberty Elementary is full. Our school board knew they would be, just like the demographer said. Uh, but they were conservative in their growth plans. And so we have enough space right now, but we know we're going to have an, a middle school issue in the very near future. Wow. So does that mean a new school is on the horizon? I think it means we have to um, do like we were talking about earlier, bring the people into a room and hear what they have to say. It's their school district. Um, what do they want for their children and how do we problem solve together? Because growth looks imminent. It's not yeah. going away. And that's exciting to me. And you do have a ribbon cutting coming up. I know I'm going to be there on September 2nd with the Chamber Ambassadors. And then you have an open house. That's for Liberty, right? Right. Liberty and Lincoln's was last last year because we opened that one mid-year. Mm-hmm. So this is for Liberty. Mm-hmm. And so if people are interested, you have an open house, I believe, is it on September 2nd from 4 to 6? Right now, it's 61 degrees. Our own radio station. Not Fargo, not the Twin Cities. Proud to be Bismarck and Mandan's own Super Talk 1270. Welcome back to United Way's Community Talk on Super Talk 1270. I am Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director of the MSA United Way, and co-hosting with me is Amber Jensen. Good morning. Amber, you have some events coming up you'd like to plug for United Way? We do. First off, next Thursday, if you don't have lunch plans, head on down to the MDU Utilities Building on 4th Street, right north of downtown. Uh, We are having a free Goodwill lunch uh, sponsored by Specialized Cleaning and Restoration, and 100% of those proceeds will go back to United Way. So next Thursday, September 4th, join us at MDU. 
And thank you to Montana Dakota Utilities for sponsoring that. It's going to be in their parking lot yeah. right downtown from our right a block from our office. Hopefully we have some sunshine because we'll be out grilling some burgers, brats, and pulled pork. You know, it was really neat. It's a free will donation. And l- the last time we held it there, uh, Dave Gooden was our campaign chair. And someone, uh, architects that were visiting, er, dropped like a $1,000 check. Oh, wow. It was really good. So we will accept donations of all size That's to right. help our community campaign. <laughs> uh, we are talking today um, about the education in the Bismarck Mandan community. We have a fantastic guest, Tamara Uzelman, the superintendent of Bismarck Public Schools. Tamara, thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me over. You know, one of your, you have so many strong points as a leader in our community, Tamara, but one of them is your ability to collaborate and communicate and and really, um, you know, set your vision and people just love to follow. I mean, they really do because they feel a part of it. And so I just want to thank you for everything you've done for our community because your 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 vision is, is really inclusive and you empower the people who work with you. So thank you for that. Thank you. I, I, yeah, thanks. It's a good time <laughs> to be in North Dakota with an awful lot of good, hardworking people. Yeah, we do. We do have a good community. They're so generous and giving. In fact, I don't even know if you know this, um, but uh, Amber, you met with Fran Rodenberg, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had a conversation over the phone to look at uh, working how our women's leadership circle can get involved and, and help students, uh, whether it be with reading. You know, recently we learned that 29% of our students don't feel they have a positive role model. And so what can the women's leadership circle do uh, to get involved with those students' lives to, to help the students because of the growth? Uh, it's nice that everybody can kind of wrap their arms around these students and, and help out. Well, and you were just had a group for Day of Caring at Saxvik Elementary. Yeah, they helped sort all of the books. Uh, they also helped uh, the social worker there uh, get prepared for the upcoming school year because we have so many generous people that are dropping off coats, uh, giving shoes because there are people and kids that are in need of that. And she just kind of had it in random closets all over the school. So it was nice for the, the Women's Leadership Circle to help organize, help prepare the teachers for this upcoming school year with the growth that they're seeing. That extra set of hands is so valuable that you brought into Saxvig. So thank you so much. Well, it's because of your your teachers and your leadership, Mm -hmm. you know, within those schools Mm -hmm. is so strong. Gosh, they're so darn appreciative. And we know that they put in a lot of extra hours on their off time. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing, the demands. So, Tamara, we know in our community, one in 12 people are living in poverty. Where, you know, what have you seen in the last few years as far as children who are at risk or high poverty students? And what are some of the things that that the Bismarck Public Schools is able to do to address some of this? So we have seen a huge poverty and poverty is much more difficult for individuals to deal with when it's when it also interfaces with mobility. And given the kind of growth we've had in Bismarck, the cost of housing, the limited amount of housing available, a lot of our kids who are most poor are also most mobile. Uh, and lack of um, a secure bed at night to know exactly where you're going home to, that makes it difficult to do homework. It makes it dif- difficult to have nutritious snacks. Um, so it makes it difficult to have coats, like you guys were talking about at Saxvig. So it's a really big deal to have one out of 12 in poverty, and to know that most of the people in poverty, uh, a good share of them anyway, are children. So what have we done? We have partnered with everybody who will partner, uh, and the United Way has certainly been a good partner. The backpack program, for example, when we can send food home with kids over the weekend, we know that they will have um, some healthy meals. And that really came to be because the school nurse noticed kids were sick in school, and dizzy and ill on Mondays and that's because hmm. they were hungry. How so do you concentrate ki- if you're not? You can't. I mean eating all weekend. Uh, and with some of our most destitute kids, we see their anxiety when it comes to be Friday and they know there's not going to be breakfast and there's not going to be lunch for them. So this backpack program is just a godsend. In this country, the richest country in the world, we can feed our children. The nice thing is the community is very responsive to the needs that are presented. And, and I just have to thank everyone out there. If you've sponsored our United Way backpack program, it's $4.50 for a backpack full of food. And 
through United Way's backpack program, we can make sure those kids are eating. It's it's a simple solution, uh, but through Bismarck Public Schools and your collaboration, we are able to go beyond that immediate need and send case managers into the home. So I appreciate your willingness to work with us in looking at the needs that extend beyond the school day. Well, the part that's most exciting for me is that the case management work done, for example, through Neighbors Network or uh, whatever group, it's designed to make the family more independent and more stable over time. It is not designed to create any kind of dependency. And I so admire changing long-term outcomes because we learned this from our speaker. Anyone can learn anything. So families can learn, even when they're under duress, how to become more independent and more self-sustaining. So you mentioned your speaker this morning. Tell us who'd you have come in and what was the topic? We had Steve Ritz come in, and he he is from the South Bronx. So when you mentioned New York and you wanted your parents to come over, to have them stop in Minnesota and get my family too because it is a great time to be in North Dakota. And Mr. Steve Ritz was in love with North Dakota when he was here, but he's a man who's taken an urban poor, just a core of urban poverty, desolation, abandonment, and he's turned it into what he calls the Bronx Green Machine. His kids are growing food uh, for families. His kids, who are the poorest of the poor, are raising food for other people and they're donating to orphanages no um, in Africa. And they're yeah. learning how to take care of themselves and how to take care of the world. So he really has changed outcomes for the poorest of the poor kids. What life lessons. Absolutely. How inspiring. It, he was so motivating. Wow. And so, you know, I think you are just as motivating to our community and to your team. So what are some of your goals? What's your vision for the Bismarck Public Schools in our community? So we have actually a relatively um, easy to follow vision. First, all means all. Every single kid who comes to us should be given that guarantee that public education offers. And that is to be well skilled for the world they're going to live in this 21st century, not the 20th one, which all of us grew up in. So that's one of ours, all means all. Um, a few other things we know is that movement is magic and what kids put inside the, their bodies for food is really important. So we want them to make long-term healthy decisions. We want them to be able to use technology to solve real problems without doing naughty stuff out in the digital world because the internet is an unforgiving beast and it remembers forever these kind of posts that kids have. We want them to um, take care of the environment, uh, to reduce and reuse and recycle. <laughs> and in that order, actually, reduce first, reduce their consumption. Uh, so we want them to be career and college ready um, using those 21st century skills. And those are the things we focus on at Bismarck Public Schools. Wow. <laughs> Just, Just a small pretty list. Pretty lofty goals. Is that it? Is that all you got? Well, there's, a, there's a whale of a good team. We you know, have 1,000 teachers and probably 800 people in support positions, whether it's the superintendent, and my job is to support the learning, or whether it's a custodian, that custodian's job is to support the learning, or the school cook. Absolutely. So all of us. Yeah. And so how do you incorporate parents? into this vision and what can they be doing to help so their child succeed? We we get the opportunity to build a relationship. You talked about that with Dr. Um, Bitts and Jeff Lind and that relationship building is what matters. So we know this, parents send to us the very best kids they have. They don't keep their perfect children behind the sofa and then send, you know, <laughs> trouble. We are blessed with the opportunity to educate kids. There's a number of choices parents could make. They're choosing Bismarck Public Schools. So that trust bond is pretty significant to us. And then the best thing that parents can do is work directly with their classroom teacher. Um, they can learn the curriculum, they can learn the goals, and they can work with their children. And what can the community be doing? Well, anytime the community um, has been asked, they've supported us. So I, all I can say to the community is thank you. We, we needed space desperately. You believed it. You provided it for us. Um, some of these partnership programs for the most destitute kids, um, people have stepped up. Well, thank you, Tamara. Thanks for your leadership. Thank you to your hardworking team. Also, a special thank you to Dr. Mike Bitts, the superintendent, Mandan Public Schools, and Jeffrey Lynn. Happy birthday, Jeff. <laughs> uh, we want to thank our community for supporting one another and being there for kids who need them the most. Bismarck Public Schools has had an increase on average of 350 kids per year. Uh, Mandan has an extra 115 students this year. We are growing 
working, we are being proactive, and we only do this by working together. So thank you to everyone. Thanks to Town Square Media. We will be back in just two weeks from now. Tune in to United Way's Super Talk, uh, uh, United Way's Community Talk on Super Talk 1270.